All right, welcome to today's build. We're going to be working on this shoe. This is an exercise that um, one of us, our students found online. And the video they found kind of goes through it and doesn't give any explanation. It's a time lapse and it goes very quickly. So we want to slow things down a little bit, figure out how can we do and model this using our spline drawings. And we're going to set them up as contours by copying and pasting our vertices. And we're going to do almost everything at first using our create and our modify tab. So stick around, join with me on how to do this. What I did is I took the picture uh, from the other YouTube channel and I saved them. I put them in the screen. They were all different sizes. So I had to line up and rescale everything to make it match um, what would be a workable size. Now I'm not worried about my units here. We can um, model the whole shoe and then scale everything up or down when we're done. I actually have it in a larger size because it was working with my zoom a little better to do that. The first thing we want to do, okay, I'm going to turn on my scene explorer here, toggle it on. So I have my four planes here. I don't need my two end planes. So I'm going to just shut the view off on those for now. And we want to model a spline uh, from the top view. So I'm going to change my viewport here, show off or Go to my top view here and let's uh, maximize that. And we're going to change it from wireframe to default, but we also want to be able to see our lines that we're drawing. So I'm going to change that to edge faces. So here we go. Now we only need to draw half of our shoe. So we're going to draw an imaginary line right down the middle and cut this. Um, we're, what we'll do is we'll draw half the shoe and then we'll mirror image it using one of our modifiers. And then that will make the other half appear. So go into your create tab second one over find your line tool and we're going to be if your line tool here is narrow so you only see one row of this so we don't have to be scrolling up and down uh, why don't you grab it right away and stretch it over to the left until it gives you two columns because we're going to be changing some of the the parameters in in here as we model first thing we want to double check before i start clicking and drawing any vertices in here Let's make sure that your line tool is going to be making smooth corners because we have a nice rounded surface. We do not need corners and we don't need beziers because we don't need to adjust it. So let's keep it simple and use smoothing, uh, smooth corners. So I'm going to find right down here is where I'm going to start. I'm just going to start drawing my uh, vertices about what would be about an inch apart on the, the real shoe and enough that my spacing stays kind of even all the way around the outside outline of my shoe. And I'm looking to go and follow the, the sole of my shoe, if that makes sense. Okay. So as I do this, you can zoom in and out. Just try to keep your spacing semi even. Okay. Follow the outside sole. Doesn't have to be perfect at first. And then this is going to be my center line coming here. So I'm going to draw this out and kind of click. I think I want to do an extra one in here and here so I can get a little better control. And then I can right click to end. Now let's go back into modify here. We're going to grab our vertices our vertex tool and we can grab our move tool. So hit W on your keyboard if you want the hotkey. And let's kind of line these up so that it takes out that little bit of a hump on there and smooths out this corner. So you might have to manually slide these down and around, but before we get to the next step, we want this to look rather uniform and the curves to be um, look natural and flowing. Okay, this back one here, um, if I stretch it, maybe this one has to go out a little bit to come in and change my angle. Oh, that's pretty close. All right, now we have our first line done. While we're here, what we're also going to do, if you notice, we're going to duplicate this line and we're going to bring it up and make it a little bit smaller as we go up like if we were slicing the shoe into layers and then we're going to put our vertices where where that plane crosses through the layers so 
if you notice the opening of my shoe is a totally different shape than the bottom, not totally, but uh, enough that it would make a big difference. What we'll do is we'll also trace the inside cutout. So I'm going to follow this gray line and draw a new uh, spline going right here. This little tag is my center. So I'm going to go probably here. And these are going to be closer together because we want to have about the same number of vertices as we put on the bottom here on the top. So since it's a smaller space, our spacing is going to be closer together. Okay, and so now they may be more comparable to what like a half inch would be. And we're only going halfway again and then right click to end and we are set. Now I can go back into my viewport here. And if you notice in my, my perspective view, we have both lines, both lines showing up. We want to take this line two and we want to drag it and bring it up higher. So let's um to move it to move it and to move it we're going to go into our modify pane i'm going to grab the spline because i want to grab that entire line okay i want to click on it i'm in my select and move tool with w i click on it and we're just going to grab the one vertex the z just dra drag it up a little bit and now i am going to go on my front view just to get it out of the way okay um, and we can line it up on my front view, so zoom in and let's turn on our plane so we can see it by going to default shading and perfect. It's showing up. So we're going to grab this. I'm still in the move tool. If you're not grab it again, drag this up and I'm going to line up this very left vertex vertex with the cutout of my shoe. So kind of this back area. Okay. The rest I'll leave. For now, um, well, we're here. Let's do this. Um, we're going to change and go to my vertex tool. What we're going to do is we just want to grab each one of these vertexes, okay? And we are going to move them down. So you can do it one at a time, or you can draw a box around a couple of them and move them down so you don't have to go so far, okay? And kind of adjust one by one. These are all coming down. So I'll grab and box a few of them, kind of get them into place. And what we're going to do is we're just following the contour of, of my shoe of the opening in this second direction. So that's going to give us a live line. Because remember, if we look at it from the other way, it, it follows the cutout of the shoe. And then here now, we're following the topography, looking at it from the front. Okay, so we don't want to move anything on the X right now because that will skew everything kind of off and make it look really weird. So we're only moving things up and down on my Z axis. And when you have all of those done, then we'll hit the pause button for a minute. And we are going to, now we don't want to move any on the X right now because this very first um, set of vertexes should follow that opening. So we're just going to get as close as possible on there. Now we're going to go back into my scene explorer, click on line one. Okay. Now, if you try to select this, okay, I'm in the move tool and I try to move this when I click on line one, watch what happens. Okay. What happens is it moves my, my plane, plane number two, right? And I don't want to do that. So I'm going to hit undo because I want these to be locked into place and not be moving around on me. Um, so what I want to do is before I do anything, I'm going to grab my line number two here, but I want to click back on vertexes on my line. Okay. And when I have vertexes selected, oh, we want line one. I'm sorry, that's why it's not working. When I click on vertexes, then it gives me the option of seeing and moving just my vertexes around. Okay, does that make sense? So it has to do with what tool you have selected will decide what you move in your scene. So for the first thing that we're gonna do before we do anything else, let's 
bring up these vertexes as well. Um, I'm going to leave this here for a minute. We'll come back and get that in a few minutes. Um, all of these have to come up. So I'm going to bring these up to the bottom of my, my shoe. And I guess I could do it to the bottom of, of the cleats. Let's do both of these up a little bit. So, and then these are going to come up whoop, and move these up. Okay. And I'm going to zoom in a little more and we're going to grab these last two. Move these up together. And then this last one, this will get me pretty close. All right. So now that is our first contour. And we will adjust the size in a minute. But what we want to do is we want to clone this entire spline as part of line one, because we're going to connect all these vertices together to form a structure in a web. Okay. So what we want to do is if I have vertexes selected and, and I move and I clone this holding my shift and my, my move tool. What happens is it's connecting these lines here, and I don't want to do that right now. I just want to clone the spline. So I have to make sure I change this from vertex to spline tool. Select your spline now, which is that original line, and it's curving. And now I hold shift, and I'm going to bring this up and kind of line it up with the bottom of the, or the top part of my white sole or the bottom of the, the shoe itself, okay? Um, I don't want to clone it. So that is about as good as it gets now. Um, if you notice, if you notice that is a little bit longer. So what we can do is we can grab my scale tool. Okay. Here's my scale, uniform scale. And we're just going to scale this whole thing uniform down a tiny bit with this one on the bottom. We're going to grab this one and we're going to scale this one down a little bit. Okay. And kind of. Fudge those a little bit right and left, kind of line these up. And now I can go back um, because I cloned that already. Now I can go back and we're going to adjust all these vertexes uh, on both of these lines. And we are going to do this one more time. So I don't want, if you remember, because we have, let me rotate my view. You don't have to rotate your view. I want to, both of these are going to follow the sole, okay? over but because the radius is the entire sole on the back is cut down a little bit let me see if i can go back to my front view let's see we were in front okay what we want to do is we want to kind of grab both of these and slide them both over a little bit together so that my curve stays more uniform okay so this part of the sole is pretty good this is where it gets a little tedious sometimes trying to do all this minute measurement. But if you get it done well the first time, it's going to make things a lot easier down, down the run. So I'm going to bring these down to the left a little bit so they line up here. Maybe I should actually have it follow this little orange part of the sole up. Okay. And I'm kind of stretching all three of those vertices. Vert vertexes or vertices plural together and then this one will go down okay um i'll leave this for now i'm not so worried about that detail let's just keep it simple okay and then these are going to come up and up and let's move these up And these up, so we'll get those close. Now we have a nice line and part of our curve here. What we want to do next, and we'll adjust this one, is clone this entire spline again. Okay, not the vertexes, but let's uh, level this on out a little bit and just kind of bridge the difference. Now I'm going to grab the spline and we're going to clone this again, and we're going to go about mid shoe up here and do another contour and this one's going to be smaller yet so grab your shift tool when you're in the move hold shift down and 
hold on, I don't want that one. I want this spline. So collect, click on the top spline because it's already matching the shape of our wave a little bit. And I'm going to drag this up. Okay. I'm going to grab my scale tool, uniform scale. And we're going to make this smaller and bring this in so that our curve also shrinks at the same time. And notice how I have extra on the right and less on the left. Now I'm going to drag this entire spline over, get it close. And we can, I want to keep this distance good, but these vertexes. So go back to your vertex tool. We're going to drag a box around these four and start bringing these down a little bit. Okay, those, and then these three together. Okay, and then at the last. Okay, so it's kind of like when you look at a Google Earth topography map, map that you'll see when we look on this top view. Let's restore our viewport here. So from top, these lines and are following our our shoe a little better. Okay. And this looks like it actually got moved a tiny bit. So make sure you don't slide your plane. Which plane is this? Is this? Nope. I think it's plane one. So we want it to line up front and back. And I think that's better. Okay. So hopefully this is starting to make sense. It gets a little tedious. We're going to do one last thing before we move on to the next step. And then that's going to be the end of this video. We want to bring the top of my shoe. Okay. This part of my shoe, we want to clone this down. So this is line. The bottom is line one. The top is line two. So make sure you select line two. Grab your spline tool over here. We're still in modify and we're going to clone it and drag this down. Okay. And because we want to split the difference and kind of take the, the mean or the middle of, of these two lines and vertices. So to do that, we're going to grab, draw a box around these two and drag those back to the back. And down, oh, we don't want the whole spine. Let's change to our vertex tool. Oh, let's do this before we even do that, before I move it. Let's um, scale it up now because we want it, all those contours to be bigger. So grab your scale tool and we're gonna stretch it bigger like this until, it's okay, I guess. And we will slide the whole spline this way and then we're going to kind of split the difference. So we want these two, let's change our vertex tool. We want these to be spaced in between the top and the bottom. So I grab a couple of these at a time. Let's bring these down about halfway. Okay. So from here to here, this is close to halfway. Same thing here. Let's bring this one down halfway. This one over a little bit and down. Okay. And I'm going to control shift a couple of these to bring them all down a, a smidge. And then these over here, that's not, let me undo that. I don't want to do that. Um, we're going to bring these up and these up and then this one up. Okay, and take it to the front of the shoe there. This one, let's bring it down to maintain a curve. And we want the curve to be nice and flowing. We don't want any sudden uh, change of direction in our sweeping curve, if that makes sense. Let's split the difference here about halfway between these lines and the same thing. Okay, so there's some manual adjusting and tweaking going on to make this all line up. But when you get it, if we go back and restore our viewpoint and look from the top, okay, 
What we also want is for this spline, okay, these vertexes, to be coming out this direction. So that's going to be the last step that we do here, and then we are going to leave off on this video. So let's adjust these vertexes. And this might get a little messy, but it's we definitely want to do it now before we go too farther, too much farther. So I still have my vertexes done, and I want to select line two vertexes. And we want to drag out only this bottom one. Okay, let's kind of drag these out. And I got to make sure I'm on the right line. So looks like this one's my next one. And we also want to split the difference between between these and the other one. We're going to do the same thing with this and bring this up. So we don't have to get too perfect on this first section here yet. Okay. And we don't want to move the whole spline because this part should be lined up with our halfway point. But we do want to open up our curve that follows. So now let's click on line one and we're going to grab this most the the topmost spline and we're going to drag some of these up and we're only moving them right now on the y because we already moved them on the x and the z so what i want them to do is we've kind of picked on the back here i want to follow this line going through the reebok symbol here at least for now, and that's going to be about halfway. Okay, and this one for sure needs to come up all the way to the middle of that black. And it looks like this one, which one is this, needs to go up to the halfway point and back. Did I get two in there? I might have got those stuck together. So let me undo that. I don't want to weld those points together. Let's just move that. Okay, let's go like this. I want to keep those separate for now. So if they get stuck together, I might have auto weld turned on and welding will get those kind of stuck together. Let's put this one on the top of the white part, this one to the black, okay. And we might need to adjust this and the directionality to follow that that part here and these follow the the white part of the sole okay we want to bring these in to follow my white line where the sole meets the upper uh, of my shoe okay looks like the stitching is here so i'll follow the stitching Bottom, which one is this? So this is my interior line. This also needs to go on my stitching. They can be tight. I'm not worried about that. But which line? Okay, so my left one here should follow my shoe here. And the last part should go and where the sole meets the insole. All right. I think that is looking pretty good. So when you get yours done this far, um, you'll be sitting pretty and ready for the next step. Thanks for joining me in part one. I look forward to seeing you back here in the next part when we start uh, connecting these, doing a cross section and adding a surface. We will see you in the next one.